What's up guys? So today we're going to go over mesh current analysis and mesh current analysis is pretty straightforward. Uh, whenever you have a circuit that has parallel branches and you have loops in the circuit or I guess just contained areas of the circuit, you can use this method. And then basically you go around the loop and you add up all the voltages and set it equal to zero. So you can draw your mesh currents either clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever way you want, and label them uh, counting from one all the way up until how many loops you have. So here we have I1, I2, I3. And if we look at I1 starting with the voltage source on the left going clockwise, we're going to have negative 40 plus I1, which is a current times the resistance, which is equal to the voltage. So I1 times 2. And then for the resistor in the middle, we're actually going to have I1 subtracted by the current of I2 multiplied by the resistance. So we can follow suit with all of the three loops doing the same exact method. Whenever you have a resistance that has more than one current going through it, you're going to take the subtraction of the direction of the current. So you can see in the second and third equations, I'm done the exact same thing there. So now that we have three unknowns, three equations, we can go about solving for I1, I2, and I3. We can do this by first simplifying down the equations. And then once we have the equations simplified down, we can use what's called uh, reduced, ro reduced row echelon uh, format which is something you can solve in your calculator very easily if your teacher lets you use a calculator or uh, you're allowed to use a computer. So uh, first we're going to represent the three currents on the left side of the equation, uh, sorry, the three coefficients of the three currents, and then the fourth column is actually going to be what's to the right of the equal sign. So in this case, the row or column one will be the coefficient of I1, Column 2 will be the coefficient of I2, and then uh, same thing for I3. So as you can see, we've used reduced row echelon formula to actually reduce the uh, system of equation down to what I1, I2, and I3 are equal to, uh, which is going to be what's in the farthest right-hand column. So now that we've used reduced row echelon format to solve for I1, I2, and I3. Uh, we can actually write out what those will be. And this is actually really powerful. Uh, whenever you're doing circuit analysis, uh, I know for me, reduced row echelon was something I used almost every single time. It was super handy. Uh, you just pop it in the calculator and out pops the answer. So. Um, let's see. So now that we've solved for the three currents, uh, we can actually go about solving for the unknowns in the problem. So the first one is going to be the power through the voltage source on the left-hand side. We'll just call it P1. And uh, the second voltage source, we'll just call it P3 because it has uh, current 3 going through it. So for power, as you guys know, is... Uh, current times voltage or IV so we'll take the voltage first which is negative 40 and we'll multiply it by the current which in this case is 5.6 and we actually get a power of negative 224 watts and taking the same approach for the power through voltage source number three, we're actually going to get a power of negative 16 watts. So just one, one way of kind of doing a sanity check on this whenever you do these equations. Uh, just remember, voltage sources are actually sourcing power to the circuit. So the power for the voltage sources should always be negative because they're actually giving power to the circuit. Whenever you have a positive power, that actually means power is being dissipated through that element. So when solving for V0, 
um, we actually get 28.8 .8 volts. So 